Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in today. My name is Tyler Dowdy. Welcome to Relentless Biotech. Today, we are talking about the humble and beautiful egg as a binding agent in our food. Now, there's some pretty simple biochemistry going on uh, that allows eggs to bind your foods together. Uh, and we'll talk about that in this video. We'll also step into the kitchen and we'll try to make a recipe with and without eggs to see the difference in binding in that recipe. But first and foremost, let's get my face off of the screen and let's see an egg frying. Now it seems kind of silly to watch an egg frying. You've probably done this a thousand times yourself, but notice that the white part of this egg is going to go into the pan as a uh, transparent liquid and it is going to quickly turn into a solid that is opaque. Yeah, that pan is hot from being on the stove and the heat from that pan is going to cook the egg. The egg's gonna go from a liquid to a solid, which is actually kind of an unusual thing for, um, for foods to do. Uh, and that's gonna be a really nice factor that helps bind our foods together. Now, if we go over and look at a couple of recipes, of course, uh, eggs are found in a lot of things from custards to muffins to cookies and they act as a binding agent to hold the different components of these recipes together. Uh, but how do eggs bind things together? The answer today is gonna to be some simple and easy biochemistry. So let's see how it works. Okay, let's take a look at the moment that that egg dropped into the pan. You can see at this point, the egg white is still a liquid and that liquid is chock full of this protein called ovalbumin. So what you're looking at here is a cartoon diagram of what the ovalbumin protein looks like. Don't worry if you don't know what these shapes mean and why they're there, but if you wanna look up alpha helices and beta sheets, you can learn more about protein structure. You won't need to know it for this video. The concept that you need to know is that this tightly folded protein excludes water from touching a lot of its surfaces. And what that allows is for this protein to be dissolved in water. Uh, we would call that a soluble protein. Uh, this protein is actually very important. Although we're talking about why it helps us in cooking, it's actually there in the egg to nourish the uh, young embryo as it's growing. So if this was a fertile egg, it would take ovalbumin from the egg white uh, into the yolk for the developing baby chicken which would provide amino acids for that uh, developing egg. Uh, if we're cooking this egg, we will see with heat that the egg becomes solid in its white portion, of course, and that is because ovalbumin changes its conformation in an irreversible way. So ovalbumin now looks like this cartoon diagram at the bottom. And one thing about this diagram is that it has exposed hydrophobic surfaces. Hydrophobic surfaces are another thing you can look up and learn about. Uh, but for now, let's just think about where these green arrows are pointing as places that do not want to interact with water. So if you have a bunch of proteins that have exposed hydrophobic surfaces, rather than interact with water molecules, they interact with each other. They basically are hiding those surfaces from the water. And you can see in this diagram, they form aggregates that will exclude water on all sides. Uh, and as we cook the egg, we're also going to evaporate some of this water. So we have protein aggregation and we have less total water in the egg than we started. And together, these two factors make our egg white turn into a solid. Now this concept is the same concept that's going to allow eggs to bind things together when we're cooking. So let's step into the kitchen and make some granola. All right, so it's time to step into the kitchen and do a little experiment. First, before we really experiment with anything, let's assemble a dry granola mixture. I call this Mama Tyler's famous granola recipe. You can make it at home by switching out literally any of these components for another dry ingredient. It will work fine. First, we're gonna mix together the dry ingredients and then we're gonna add in some wet ingredients for flavor. They will give a little bit of uh, adhesion to this and make it a little bit more chewy. Uh, but mostly this is the beginning part of the granola before we would put in eggs. So the experiment here is to see what will happen when we do and we do not add eggs. So first, in the left-hand section, we will have no eggs added to our granola. We'll cook it and we'll see what it feels like for a consistency. Next, we'll add in one half of the normal eggs to this recipe. This would be the equivalent of making the whole recipe and adding two egg whites, which is half of what I normally add. 
So let's mix that together. Remember, ovalbumin is in the liquid phase here, so it and the water is being distributed equally throughout the granola mixture, and it should help bind these components together. Next, we'll add a little bit more egg white. This will raise the concentration of our granola to what I would normally put. Uh, this would be the equivalent of adding four egg whites to the whole recipe itself, and that's how I usually make it. Spoiler alert, this was not the tastiest of the granolas that we made, so Mama Tyler's recipe is going to have to be adjusted. I hope Mama Tyler does not get too mad. Uh, let's now take it up another level and add even more egg white. This will be double the concentration of egg white that I would normally use, and we'll add that to the pan. Now what we can do is put these in the oven for 20 minutes at 160 Celsius. What's that, 300 or so Fahrenheit? I don't know. Uh, but we're gonna cook this for a while and we're gonna see what the consistency feels like on the other side of bacon. While our granola mixture heats up in the oven, let's think about what's going on biochemically between the components that we mix together. So before baking, we mixed together the dry ingredients, then we mixed in some flavoring, and then we added in egg whites. And remember, egg whites are, well, they're a lot of water, and they have a lot of ovalbumin in them, which is, again, this cartoon protein that I'm showing. Now, ovalbumin is in solution with that water. It is dissolved in water, and therefore, it can mix evenly as we mix that uh, wet egg white throughout the granola. Now what happens when we add heat to this mixture is our ovalbumin uh, is going to change its conformation. Remember, it opens up into this V-shape and that exposes hydrophobic surfaces. And those hydrophobic surfaces, they don't wanna to touch any water, so they quickly start to aggregate. But now our mixture is not just egg white ovalbumin touching egg white ovalbumin, it's egg white ovalbumin finding the closest thing that it can bind to to effectively hide from water. You can think of this like musical chairs. Like when the music stops, you just have to find the closest possible chair. And in this case, ovalbumin is finding the closest possible protein or component of these uh, dry ingredients to bind to. And what that does is it adds structure to our granola because now we have bridges being built in between our different uh, dry, dry components. And of course, we're, ovalbumin is not nearly this big. We're, we're kind of making this into a cartoon. What would really happen on a microscopic level is ovalbumin protein would be binding to, for instance, protein on the peanut uh, that you can see in the top left of that diagram. But anyway, this simplified diagram tells us how eggs act as a binding agent. And from this, we should generate the hypothesis that the more egg white that we added, the more of these links we should get, and the more structure our granola should have. So let's see the results. All right, let's step back into the kitchen and see how our granola is looking. I actually let this cool a little bit, and while it was cooling, I decided to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit to let you guys know that I baked this at 320 Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius uh, for 20 minutes. Now, again, the whole experiment that we designed here is that this granola on the left, which omits the use of eggs as a binding agent, we, our hypothesis is that this should be pretty crumbly. You can see that I can get it out of there in one chunk, but it does really fall apart. It's extremely brittle uh, in my hands. And if I give it even a little bit of a, of a twist, you can see that it's actually breaking down to its individual components. You can see like individual chia seeds falling out of the mixture. Now, if we add one half of the egg that we normally would add in Mama Tyler's recipe, uh, we can see it's a much more chewy texture. And that's that ovalbumin from those eggs creating some linkages between the granola. Now, the concentration is half of normal so that well, it's still a little bit crumbly uh, compared to the original recipe, which is shown here at the top. You can see there that we have even more texture, and even when I push down on it a bit, it still doesn't really break very easily uh, into its individual constituents. So we can't really break like single sunflower seeds off of this so easily because everybody is now linked by those protein bridges. So that's the 1x concentration that I normally make. And now here is the double concentration. So this has twice the amount of eggs. 
and I'm actually having trouble even getting it to separate from the other bits of granola there. It's not stuck to the bottom of the paper, it's stuck to itself. And I had to really cut into this several times to try to uh, pull this thing and pry this thing out. So it's really quite sticky, which I think illustrates well how adding more eggs leads to more structure inside of our granola. I will eventually get that out, please cheer for me. And what you'll see at the end here is, well, quite a uh, chewy texture to this granola. Now, if you're interested in knowing which one tasted the best, well, it was actually the one half concentration that was the very tastiest. All right, friends, pat yourself on the back. You made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. Today we talked about how the almighty egg, especially the egg white and its oval bumen, uh, give structure to our favorite baked goods. Uh, we updated Mama Tyler's granola recipe, which used to include four egg whites to now include two because, well, the consistency is just better and the taste was a bit better. Uh, so hopefully you'll try out that recipe. If you want to remove the carbs and the gluten, take out the oats and replace them with whatever you want. It should still work fine. Uh, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. I hope you'll tune in again. Our very next video will be on the product corn. So this is a product that I really enjoy eating. It's a meat substitute and it's a really cool biotech company which has used a microorganism to create a protein patty that feels like meat in your mouth. It tastes good, it's good for you, and it's actually good for the environment. So I hope you'll hang out and check out that video as soon as we get it done. Thanks for tuning in. This is Relentless Biotech. Much love to you.